Hello, welcome to AMCI Saturday Study Session, or SSS. I'm Mrs. J, Curriculum Director here at AMCI, and I am delighted to present AMCI Lead Instructor, Ms. Tamika, along with her guest. Without further ado, let's get started. Take it away, Ms. Tamika. To it, yeah, study session, musculoskeletal. I know you guys are ready. Are you ready? Are you ready to get this thing on? We're working out today, okay? We're gonna get this musculoskeletal workout on and solve some time scenarios. Yeah, call it out. That's what I'm doing or not. I'm calling it out. Yes, Brittany, don't y'all make me start having church up in here, okay? Yes, Sonia. Yes, Susan. We're ready to do this thing, all right? Come on, Miss Chingwe. Let's go ahead. Well, you know what? I'm going to do this little quick one. I'm not even really going to mute myself. I want you guys to tell me what is the acromion, okay? Is it part of the elbow joint? Is it the ligament near the knee, the tendon in the shoulder, or is it an extension of the scapula? You guys go ahead and pop that answer in there. Let me see what you're talking about, all right? My, my whole Saturday crew, let's see. All right, I got a little bit of a mix, and that's okay. Just pop in what you think it is because hey is these little things like this sometimes you'll have some little questions like this on there and if you're not sure what it is i'm going to show you an actual picture so you will know what is the acromion and where it is okay so i'm going to have you flip to the front part of that musculoskeletal book if you're not sure where and what the acromion is, okay? Do I have any more takers? I'm not gonna spend much time on this thing. The answer is D, all righty? So that acromion, it sits right here, okay? This is actually the posterior or the back. So here's your scapula, and the acromion is an extension of the scapula. I know you see this little thing here, but that's simply a tendon, and it is a continuation of the scapula, okay? It sits here, the acromion is like the hood, you touch on your shoulder, you see that, you'll feel that little notch there. That's the acromion, okay? Yeah, okay. So that's just a little bit of, I won't say trivia. It is something for you to know. You can notate it, like I said, on your graphics there at the front of the book. I don't know if you have this particular graphic, but I'm sure you have something just so you know, and it helps you to get oriented, okay? So if they're speaking about the chromium, you know you should be somewhere in the upper extremities around that shoulder, okay? <laughs> hey, that's all right, Miss Cheryl. That's why you guys are here, all right? We here to fine tune this thing. You guys are going to be chromium, a chromium pros, coding crow, coding Rose, somebody get me my coffee. As soon as I mute myself, I'm going to take a sip. All right, let's do it, Miss Chinway. Come on, lady. All right. The patient, okay, I'm sorry. The answers are A, 21325, B, 21310, C, 21315, and D, 21337. The patient presents today for close reduction of a nasal fracture. The depressed right nasal bone was elevated using heavy reduction forceps, while the left nasal bone was pushed to the midline. This resulted in good alignment of the external nasal dorsum. What CPT code is reported for this procedure?
All right, guys. I see some folks had their Wheaties this morning. You guys came ready to roll. And for those of you who got real close, no worries. All right, I'm going to help you pivot in the right direction. This thing is not very long, but there's a lot of good stuff in here that we're going to unpack, okay? So your answer is indeed C. I'm going to tell you how we got there. This is indeed is a closed reduction nasal fracture. The right nasal bone, okay, was depressed. It's being elevated with reduction forceps. The left nasal bone was pushed, all right? So what do we have? Now, I like to delve into uh, definitions. And again, how you chun your book is is specific to you, okay? Use the, the various things that we have in place for you, the circle, highlight, underline, and notate. And as you begin to do it, you will find what works for you, what seems to just speak to you, okay? All righty, so for me, differentiating between words and their definitions is always key. So reduction of a nasal fracture is the medical term for setting the nose back to its normal position. Now, stabilization is the use of an external nose splint to stabilize the fracture. So you see, those are two different things to help get that nose back to where it's supposed to go. Yeah, that's right, Susan, I'm telling you. This was a game changer for me. So little things like this are things that I have a tendency to put into my book. I don't like it very cluttered, but certain things will help you pivot to the right code. And that's one of them. At least it was for me. All right. So for the first thing we're going to take a look at is this 21310. It's closed treatment of a nasal bone fracture. All right. Without manipulation. So we see when we start talking about manipulation, we know that we are talking about what? All right, it is closed, so that's good. That's why I got that in green, but heavy reduction forceps. When you start reducing something, it's being manipulated. All right, so there we go. We know that right there. Uh-uh. That we got to take that one away. Let's take a look at this 21325. It is indeed closed treatment. That's some good stuff. It is of the nasal bone fracture, but it is without stabilization and again this this bone was pushed okay it was pushed but no no stabilization was 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 taking place it was without stabilization because there's no mention of a nose splint okay the reduction implies manipulation all right not stabilization all right, so therefore we're gonna hold what we got. We're gonna give that a light yes. We gotta see what these other codes hold for us before we say, yeah. All right, so this is open treatment. We don't even have to keep reading. We know it was closed. So just go ahead and take that one off. It doesn't matter, it was uncomplicated. Boom, right there, that open. Look here, we gotta be quick. We don't have much time on that exam. Let's take him off because that's open. That's a no-brainer right there. This one is closed. That's good stuff. Look here, nasal septal fracture. Yeah, we talking about the nasal septal fracture. With the, It looks good, but look here. Look here. Boom, septal fracture. We're dealing with a bone. Bone. You see what I did right there? Look at that bone. Okay, so yeah, that's off. See, real subtle. Therefore, we've taken a look at that. So that's a good code right there. All right, so how's everybody doing? Does that does that clarify? See, who knew all that was in that little itty bitty scenario, right? All right, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Perfect. I'm glad to hear you guys are doing good, Miss Sophia, Brittany, Susan, Amanda, Dana. All right, we're gonna keep it going, guys. All right, Miss Chimway, if you be so kind to come and read this next scenario, I appreciate you, lady. All right. Um, the answers are A, 20552, B, 20553, C, 20610, and D, 20553 times 3. A 39 year old involved in a motor vehicle accident MVA a year ago arrives to the pain clinic with complaints of neck pain and left sided radiculopathy complicated by cervical de degenerative disc disease. NSAIDs and physical therapy have been unsuccessful and the patient requires multiple trigger point injections. The left multifidus 
trapezius and right levator scapula were injected. The area was cleansed and bandage applied. Which procedure code best describes this encounter? Thank you, Ms. Chimwe. All right, guys, you know the drill. You've got two and a half minutes in your time. It starts now. All right, everybody have their answers in there. I think we do because I want to get as much coding in as we can this morning. You know I hate to disturb you, but I gotta. <laughs> All right, guys, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So here we go. Let's unpack this thing. And for some of you that wasn't quite there, it just took a little bit of a nudge, okay? And if you're still not sure, I'm going to help you get there. No worries. The answer is indeed B. Let's go ahead and take a sneak peek as to why. All right, for our keywords, this patient is 39 years old. They were involved in an MVA. They have neck pain, left-sided radiculopathy, cervical degenerative disc disease or DDD, multiple trigger point injections were needed into that left to multifidus trapezius, the right levator scapular were all injected. All right, so we're gonna start with this 20610. This is arthrocentesis, okay? Aspiration and or injection. This was not happening, all right? We are looking for a trigger point injection. This was arthrocentesis, nothing about all of this stuff. And 
we're not worried about a major joint or a bursa, okay? We are talking about muscles. So yeah, that's incorrect procedure as well as the type of joint. So that's not going, that's not gonna work. All righty, so we're gonna keep going. Let's take a look at our FTRs, how we need to be concerned with how many, what is the number of muscles or joints, how many? All righty, and then we, this, this right here, this is a game changer. This is pivotal for the correct code selection. We don't code according to the number of injections. All right, so let's, let's take a look at how that works. All right, indeed, there was an injection, single or multiple trigger points. Okay, that's good, but this is for one or two muscles. Now, while muscles is good, the number is not. We've got how many, guys? How many, how many, somebody? Somebody tell me how many we got. Yeah, there we go, there we go. See, once you start, there we go, yes. Yes, 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 that's right, I see it, Juana. Yes, Dana, Renata, Keisha, Sonia, Sabrina, yeah, you guys got it. We have three, all right, and that's coding for two. So we've got that multifidus, the trapezius, and the right levator, so boom, already. That's, that's gone. Just, just knowing that little bit has nothing to do with the number of muscles or joints. Well, it does. We got to know the number of muscles and joints, but it has nothing to do with the number of injections. Okay, let me say that one more time because I was so wrong with the first one. The number of muscles and joints, it matters, but the number of injections does not. Not with this code selection that we are going for with these introductions and injections. Okay, all right. So. This is good here, the injection. But what about this one? So we're on the right track. Yeah, single or multiple trigger pointer points, three or more muscles. And you know why the number doesn't matter? Remember when I told you when you have that S right there, that's got you covered no matter what. Doesn't matter if they had 10 trigger point injections, five trigger point injections, you're right with you need to be. We got to pay attention to just how many muscles were injected. Yeah, we got three of those things. That's sounding real good to me. All righty, that 20553 is good. We see it in both, but we don't need that multiplier because the number of muscles injected is what? It is integral to the code language, therefore no multiplier. And when I say integral to the code language, remember again, when you see point and then in parentheses S, that means you could have one trigger point injection, two trigger point injections, 10 trigger point injections, all right? Yeah, Miss Karen's like, got it, okay? I'm I'm drilling it into y'all's head because I want you to hear me on the exam, all right? There we go, 20553, that is your code, all right? How, how are my folks doing this morning, okay? I think we rolling, I think we rolling. Y'all are bringing the heat, y'all are bringing the heat. I'm gonna have to turn my fan on, I'm gonna turn my fan on. All right, if anybody like to grab this screenshot, you may, and then we're gonna keep on going. All right, it's good to hear. I'm glad you're doing good, Miss Susan, Chandri, and Karen, she's got it. All righty, so I'm gonna grab this next one. I'm gonna start out with your answers, all right? We have A, 23615 with an LT modifier, B, 23605 with an LT modifier, C, 23616 with an LT modifier, and finally D, 23670 with an LT modifier. A 66-year-old sustained a left proximal humerus fracture. Standard deltal pectoral approach was used and dissection was carried down to the fracture site. The fracture site was identified and fragments were mobilized and the humeral head fragments removed. Once this was done, the stem was prepared up to a size 10. A trial reduction was carried out with the DuPai trial stem and implant head. Sutures were placed in key positions for closure of the tuberosities down to the shaft, including sutures through the shaft. The shaft was then prepared and cement was injected into the shaft. The implant was placed. Once the cement was hardened, the head was placed on Morse taper and reduced. A bone graft was placed around the area where the tuberosities were being brought down. The tuberosities were then tied down with a suture previously positioned. This gave excellent closure and coverage of the significant motion at the repair sites. 
The wound was thoroughly irrigated. The skin was closed with Vicryl over a drain and also staples in the epidermis. A sterile dressing and sling were applied. The patient was taken to the recovery room in stable condition. No immediate complications. What CPT code is reported? All right, guys, take a breath. Still approach this the same way, pulling out, teasing out those keywords, okay? Take your time. You have two and a half minutes and your time, it starts now. All right, I gave you guys a little bit extra time on this one. It was a little bit of, of a split, okay? You guys were teetering indeed between A and C, and I had a few outliers there with some other 
answers as well. So no worries. And once once I gave you guys a little nudge, then you guys pivoted in the right direction. So hey, no worries there. We're going to go ahead and unpack it so you guys can jot some some reminders to yourselves in your in your CPT manuals because this one right here like I said, it, it's about being able to make the right choice when you get to that fork in the road, okay? And I indeed saw it, and that's no problem. That's what study group is for. I want you to get clear while you're here with me, okay? This is where you need to be so that you can just, like I said, we're just refining what you're doing, okay? No worries, Miss Lisa. I'm glad you're here, lady. No worries. All right, so here we go. Let's unpack this thing. The answer is A. So we're we're gonna talk about why. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna talk about why and and what happened with this particular scenario. Okay. All righty. So we're gonna go ahead. Give me one. Wait a second here. All right. You know, I, I like to answer everybody, everybody. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, so how did we get to this A? All righty, let's, let's unpack it. We have this 66-year-old patient. They sustained a left proximal humerus fracture, and we have the delta pectoral approach, the dissection. We have fragments mobilized. The humeral head fragments were removed. We have the reduction with the Dupuy trial stem implant head. We have the closure of the tuberosities. The shaft cement was injected into the shaft. The implant was placed and reduced. The bone graft tied down. The bone graft and the tuberosities were tied down. All right, so we are talking about a dissection and the fragments are removed. As soon as you see dissection, all right? And then we have this of the left proximal humerus fracture, all right? As soon as we see dissection, we know it can no longer be closed treatment, all right? Can't be closed treatment. So if this code language, this common code language is incorrect, then we already know that anything that falls up under it is incorrect as well. So closed treatment and dissection, mm -mm, that can't be. All right, so this 23605, that's off the table. We don't even have to read what else is specific to this dependent code because the common language, again, I'm always stressing that because it's when the common language is not correct that anything that's dependent on it would be incorrect as well, okay? so. This is closed treatment, no matter what it's saying up under here, even if what they're saying up under here was correct, but it's closed treatment. This is a dissection. So we know this patient has been opened. So 23605 is off the table. All right. All right. We're going to keep on going. This one is saying open treatment. I like that part. Open treatment of shoulder dislocation. We were doing all right. We were doing all right. Till it says shoulder dislocation. No, what they do with that shoulder? They broke that thing, okay? Uh-oh, thank you for saying something. Here, I'm just talking. I'm giving y'all some good stuff and nobody said, and only Miss Brittany spoke up. Y'all got to tell me when I'm not on the right track. Let me backtrack, okay? Let me just, hold on. Let me backtrack. Y'all, uh-uh, it's not you. Y'all say something. I'm over here just, I'm pouring my heart out. I'm pouring my heart out. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Miss Brittany. <laughs> oh, it was not just you, Miss Susan. Okay. <laughs> Thank y'all here. All right. Let me start over. All right. So here we go. We've got our keywords highlighted here. All right. So we're going to start in. We have the dissection. These fragments are being removed. We have this left proximal humerus fracture. All right. Now. When we look at this code 23600, it's closed treatment. As soon as we see closed treatment, we know this patient, there was a dissection carried out. So this patient has indeed been open. They've been cut. All right. So we know that when this common code language, which is everything before this semicolon, and I know I tell you this all the time, but I'm just repetition. Hey, it ain't going to hurt nobody. All right. So everything before this semicolon is common code language. So anything falling beneath this parent code, this dependent here, it's wrong too because this common code language is wrong. So it can't be closed because the patient was cut. All right, so 23605, that's off the table. 
able. All right, so we're going to come on down here to 23670. This is open treatment of a shoulder dislocation. Now, they were doing all right till they said shoulder dislocation. Yeah, open treatment. It is the shoulder, but the shoulder was not dislocated. Look at that. There was a fraction. Did you see that? Did you see that right there? Yeah, it was a fraction. So code 23670. No, we got to take that one away, okay? So I think for, for some of you that said B, now you know why that could not be, all right? You got that. Many of you didn't choose this one, but if it did get you, because sometimes the eye can be tricky. You see that open treatment, you see shoulder, you're like, that's it. No, that's a dislocation. They fractured the shoulder. That one's gone, all right? So now we're down to these two, all right? And so... We got to differentiate why one is good and one is not. Open treatment, that's good stuff right there. All right. Proximal humeral. All right. Yeah, we doing good. Includes repair of the tuberosities. All right. Humeral head, we've got closure of the tuberosities. We got some stuff going on there. Includes internal fixation. Yeah, the implant was placed. Yeah, some good stuff. So before we sign off on it, because that's sounding real good, we're going to give it a light. Yes, we got to check code 23616. This is with proximal humeral prosthetic. That's good, but uh-uh, uh-oh, look at that. Replacement. Have they ever had a place a placement of the implant? No, they would have had to have been replacing something that was there. They're having an implant that was placed. This thing is new. All right, so that would not be. So therefore, the 23615, yeah, we going to go ahead and check that off. Yeah, that replacement. Replacement and the implant being placed are two different things. Yeah, that that's what it means to be forensic. All right, y'all get y'all glass wipes out. I got mine on my desk, okay? Because I have to do it at times too. Yeah, that's what it means to be forensic, okay? All right, so how is everybody doing? And again, these FTRs, they help to guide your eye too because we're talking about what type of fracture treatment we got to determine if it's closed or open and things as simple as a dissection is letting you know no longer can this treatment be closed. It's indeed open. So any place you see that, you know that's off. Okay, they told you it was a fracture. So if you see dislocation, that cannot be. They are just getting this implant. So they are not receiving a replacement. They are receiving an implant. So here we go, internal fixation. That is the same as this implant being placed. So again, being very clear about your terminology is key. All right, how's everybody doing? All right, I see some guidance like, wow, yeah, yeah. I, th I think everybody's got the forensic glasses on. <laughs> yeah, I see you, Renata. As, as, as I hear people say, gotcha. All right, I know we got you, y'all. Yeah, we got y'all here. All right, if anybody needs to take a screenshot, go ahead and grab that screenshot, and we are gonna keep right on trucking. I'm gonna have my friend Miss Chimwe come and read us out on this one as well as the next one after this. I'm gonna give you guys two and a half minutes after she completes the reading. Okay, thank you, Miss Chimwe. All right, thank you. And the answers are A two nine eight zero five B. 29806, C29807, and D 29819. A patient is seen in the same day surgery unit for an arthroscopy to remove some loose bodies in the shoulder area. What CPD code is reported?
Oh man, look at y'all. Look at y'all. I'm loving what I'm seeing in the chat. Yes, y'all have got the right one. I might be dating myself with if, if y'all remember that commercial used to say you got the you the right one. You got the right stuff, baby, or you got the right one, baby. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Something like that, they said. Anyway, y'all got the right thing. <laughs> I'm loving it, guys. Loving it. All right. We're going to unpack it real quick and then keep on moving because you guys don't need much explanation on this one. What I'm going to do is just see if I can share something for you to just jot down in your book. All right. So the answer is in DD. All righty. You guys already know this paper was in same day surgery they had an arthroscopy loose bodies were removed in that shoulder area so yeah we know that yeah they had an arthroscopy of the shoulder but hey diagnostic okay well they removed some loose bodies so one thing i do want to remind you of you know it's no longer diagnostic when they start doing something okay once they go through that same scope and they're no longer just looking and they start tinkering it's no longer diagnostic all right at that point it's surgical okay so that wouldn't be it and we know it's not open because there's no mention of that it's still arthroscopic so 29805 we got to take that one away all right arthroscopic shoulder yeah there it is it is surgical all they were doing good they were doing all right they were doing all right with this common language before that semicolon but there's no mention of a capsule urophography ah, all right we don't have to worry about those parenthetical guidelines they don't apply in this case so that 29806 because that did not happen that one's off the table as well but because this common code language here is good stuff we got to keep looking so hey these dependent codes they're in they're fair game okay they're in play look here repair of a slap lesion we know that didn't happen we could just boom we getting rid of that thing real quick these two real quick this one right here yeah that's what happened arthroscopic of the shoulder surgical because they began to do something in this case they are removing some loose bodies so again reminding you it's no longer diagnostic now it's surgical as soon as that surgeon starts to tinker they are performing surgery. They are removing these loose bodies or the foreign bodies. We know it's not open. They're going through that scope. So 29819, that is the answer. Miss Renata, you remember that one too? <laughs> you guys got it, okay? You guys are doing it. Y'all are doing it, doing it, doing it. Y'all know y'all got this, right? Y'all got this. All right, Miss Chewie, I'm going to have you come and read our next one, lady. Okay. A. 27722LT-S82.122N-B-27722LT-S82.122F-C-27722LT-S82.102N-D-27722LT-S82.102C. A 47-year-old patient was previously treated with external fixation for a type 3A left lateral condyle tibial fracture. There is now non-union of the left proximal tibia and is admitted for open reduction of tibia with bone grafting. Approximately 30 grams of cancellous bone was harvested from the ilia crest. The fracture site was exposed and the area of non-union was osteotomized, cleaned and repositioned. Intrafragmentary compression was applied with three screws. The harvested bone graft was packed into the fracture site. What CPT and ICD-10 CM codes are reported?
All right, guys. Loving it, loving it, loving it. And hey, y'all, please know, we are, we are family here on Saturday. If y'all are not seeing my screen advance, tell me, okay? I just put a big sticky on here, remind myself to hit play again. Sometimes I will pause my screen because I'm moving stuff around in the background. And so I don't want to distract you guys. I don't want to cover up what you're seeing. And so sometimes I'll just start talking and unmute myself, but I have to press play again. So you see my on click. So if anybody wants a screenshot of what we just previously did, just the final part, when I finish explaining this, let me know and I will just pull it up with all of the with all the final things on it so that you can get a screenshot if you need to. Most of you got it correctly. I was just driving home the fact again on that last one, the difference between diagnostic and surgical, okay? But you guys did fantastic on that. But going forward, if I forget to hit play, somebody start screaming, okay? <laughs> All right, we're gonna jump in and unpack this one. You guys did fantastic on this, okay? So we're just gonna walk it through and I'm gonna show you a quick way to differentiate how to get there, okay? So this patient is 47 years old. They're previously treated. They had an external fixation with type 2A, left lateral condyle fracture. There's now a non-union of that left proximal tibia, open reduction of the tibia with some bone grafting, 30 grams of um, cancellous bone was harvested from the iliac crest. The fracture site was exposed. Uh, there was, um, let's see, there was some automized, cleaned and re positioned, okay? So there was an intra-fragmentary compression. There were three screws. Harvested bone graft was packed into that fracture site. And you guys dissected through that thing and did outstanding, okay? So let's see how y'all got there because y'all knew what to do. I'm liking what I see. I'm liking what I see, okay? Alrighty, so We've got the repair of a non-union or malunion tibia, okay? That, that, that sounds pretty good because, look, we've got that right there, non-union of left proximal tibia, all righty? So we're going to hold on to that common language there, but there's no mention of a sliding graft, okay? We did have open reduction of the tibia with bone grafting, but no sliding graft was mentioned. So we're going we're gonna, to uh, take those and get them off the table. Just like that, we're at 50%. Yes, we're at 50%, all right? Okay, so we've got now, we've got with the iliac or other autograph includes obtaining the graft. Yeah, we harvested some bone graft. We did get some bone grafting going on. So the 27724, that's good. And hey, we know it's good. It's in both of them, but here's the sticking point. How do we differentiate between those two? You know, we got to pull out the big book, that heavy one. And remember, I told you most of the time you're going to stay in that CPT manual, but there are going to be times where you've got to break that tie. And this is one of them because this is the only thing that differentiates A from D. It is that ICD-10 code. So we have the S82.1. We, then we need to go down further because remember, we're going to use these boxes. It is guiding us along. We've got five. It's telling us we need a little bit more. So we get down here. We've got the five and it still wants some more. It's saying now we need six. So here we go. We've got the fracture of the upper end of the tibia. Okay. So we're like, all right, all right. We, we're looking pretty good. But now we're saying unspecified fracture of the upper end of the tibia. Let's go a little, bit, a little further. It's still saying unspecified fracture of the upper end. Now it's saying of the left tibia, and that's good, but it wasn't unspecified. We know that it is of the left, okay? Left proximal, all right? So we know it's left, but it's telling us specifically it is the left proximal, so it wouldn't be unspecified, all right? So that would not be it. So we're going to take a look at now the, and also the issue here with this one really is that it's upper end, okay? So I'm sorry, it's upper end. So we need the lower end, all right? So this is the upper end of the tibia. We need the lower end, all right? So we have fracture of the left of the yeah, lateral 
condyle of the tibia. All right, so we've got the S8 2.12. All right, we started here. That's our boss code for the four. We got to get a little bit more. So we come on down now, S8 2.12. We need a little more lateral condyle left. Yeah, that's what we got. All right, so there we go. We've got that lateral condyle. There it is, left lateral condyle, okay? Now, now we got to have that seventh code because it's telling us when we get right there, we need the seventh code just like it told us up here. But we stopped up here because we weren't where we needed to be. All right. So we come on down here. We got the end and it is for that subsequent encounter. And we know it's subsequent because the patient was previously treated. OK, so we need this in for subsequent. All right, and then that gives it to us. But there is another way to break the tie, okay? Without even going through all of this, this is fine. We can look it up and do this, but real quick, you could simply ver verify the seventh character because this seventh character is different. Now, if it had been the same seventh character, then yeah, we got to go through and we've got to tick all of the boxes. But this character is different. So we see here that C, we see that for the N and the C. So with the C, that's for the initial encounter. All right, this patient was previously treated. So we know it's not the initial encounter. All right, it is definitely N, this is the subsequent encounter. So you could have broken the tie with that. All right, so how does everybody feel about that? Did some of you break the tie that way or did you guys look at, look through and did like I did. And you see, even I had to go, okay, wait a minute. I'm in the, I'm in the upper end and this is the lateral condyle. Okay. Yeah. So you can, you can pull that, you can pull that trick if you need to, particularly if these two, if this last, if the last letter is different, you could do it. Okay. Yeah. That's what you did too, Miss Susan. Yes. Use that seventh character okay that is always a good thing the other thing sometimes that i do and you can do with icd-10 is sometimes if i'm if i'm still not clear like if, if this wasn't the case if you couldn't break it that way sometimes i would go back and start in the alphabetic index to ensure that yeah i am indeed where i need to be in that tabular index so that's just my hang up <laughs> But hey, sometimes you just you just got to do it, okay? All right, so with that being said, you guys can grab a screenshot because I'm showing my screen. <laughs> so go ahead, guys, grab it if you need it. If not, I'm going to go ahead and keep on going, all right? And I'm showing my screen still. And you know what? Shame on me because even on my side, I have to have the drop down. I can see what you guys are seeing. So I know when you're not seeing my screen. I get to talking too much. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to read us out. We have A20551730 with a 26 modifier. B20610730 with a 26 modifier. C23357730 with a 26 modifier. We have 20552 73040 with a 26 modifier. A 49 year old female had two previous rotator cuff procedures and now has difficulty with shoulder function, deltoid muscle function, and axillary nerve function. An orthogram is scheduled. After preparation, the shoulder is anesthetized with 1% lidocaine, 8 cc's without epinephrine. The needle was placed into the shoulder area posteriorly under image intensification. It appears as if the die was in the shoulder joint. A a good return of flow was obtained. The shoulder was then mobilized and there was no evidence of any cuff tear from the posterior orthogram. What CPT codes are reported? All right, guys, I'm going to give you two and a half minutes and your time. It starts now.
All right, that's it with this one. Like I said, y'all know I hate to just disturb y'all. I always feel like I, I used to when my kids would be sleeping so good and you just hate to just nudge them. And you're like, okay, it's time. <laughs> so hey, it's time. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and jump into this one. All right, and unpack it and see what we got going on. Okay, you guys are doing just a phenomenal job. I appreciate your effort. And for those of you who just missed it, we're gonna get you pivoted in the right direction. Okay, so the answer is indeed C. Let's see how we got here. All right, so this. This female patient is 49 years old. They've had two previous rotator cuff procedures and now an orthogram of the shoulder is scheduled. So this shoulder has been anesthetized. The needle was placed into the shoulder area posteriorly and die was indeed appeared to be in the joint, okay? And so the shoulder was mobilized and there was no evidence of a cuff tear from the posterior orthogram. All right, so let's see. They're having an orthogram. They've got this needle into the shoulder and again, orthogram. So that tells me we need to be on the lookout for that. So, all right, they've had this injection, single tendon sheath or ligament. Okay, so was there an injection? Well, there was an injection of dye. Okay, but this was for a single tendon sheath or ligament. Okay, we're looking for that orthogram. All right, so yeah. That wasn't quite what happened. And so we know that with just that injection, we're looking for the orthogram because this common language here, just simply with the injection of the single tendon, no, 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 we need more than that, okay? We've got something going on with that, with that joint. So the 20551, that won't apply. And we're not worried about these uh, parenthetical guidelines because the code is not correct. So we don't need to read further, okay? So we're gonna take a pass on that one. This was indeed an injection of a single tendon sheath or ligament, okay? So we do have the injection going on, okay? They're talking about single, multiple trigger points. No, no mention of that again. Yeah, we've got that needle going in that shoulder and whatnot, but we're talking about an orthogram. Here we're talking about an injection with trigger points. No, no, no. So, oh, they keep talking about this injection. Where's that orthogram? All right, where's some mention of that? No, they're still talking about, again, an injection, single or multiple trigger points. No. All right, this one, at least they're not talking about the injection anymore, but now they're talking about an atherocentesis, some aspiration going on. Oh, no, 20610, orthocentesis, this is for aspiration and or injection. No, okay, so this is a matter of just following the key words. They're talking about an orthogram, that the shoulder has been prepared, that needle was indeed placed, but it was to inject dye. And we're talking about still this orthogram that's going on, all right? So none of these things are gonna apply. That's why we're taking them off the table, okay? So we're gonna go on, carry this stuff over, and this is what we're left with is indeed the 23350. It is the injection procedure for that shoulder orthography or enhanced CTMR orthography. Yeah, that's what's going on under in image intensification. Okay, that is taking a look radiographically. So there we go for radiographic orthography. What are we going to use? 73040. Yeah, image intensification. That's what we need, okay? None of those are gonna apply. So we got our code, 23350, and it's already telling us we are gonna need that two, that also we're gonna need the 73040. Alrighty, so you guys, I think most of you, once we kind of nudge you, yeah, you, you pivoted in the right direction and you might wanna notate so that you know that this code is good. If you see orthogram, okay, the orthography, okay, it also is talking about the orthogram, okay? All right, so how is everybody feeling after that explanation? Are we, are we, are we doing okay? 
I got to know you guys are hanging with me. Good. All right. That, that, that's what matters. All right. So if you need that, if you need the um, screenshot, you can go ahead and get it. And then we're going to keep on moving. I did have some more stuff because we could just keep on going, but we're going to we're going to change locations. OK, I had another good one, but I'm like, I got to get some more some more stuff in here. OK, so we're going to go ahead and just do what we need to do. OK, yeah, the key words. Uh huh. You're right. You're right, Miss Cheryl. Yeah. And that's right. Keisha, go ahead and put uh, orthogram. That's what I did in my book. I just put it over there in parentheses um, and then write the definition also. And I didn't pull it out for you guys. Write that you can write the definition also to remind yourself the difference between the orthography as well as the orthogram. OK. But if you don't want to write all that, just put orthogram over there. That's what I did because you're going to be flying through that book. OK, so you don't want to get too, too detailed, but you need just enough. OK, and I think putting that over there will help you out. All right. So you know what? We're not even going to fool with that one. So we're going to continue on to the next thing. So I'm going to just tinker a little bit back here and and we're going to pivot because we've got to get We've got to get some, get some respiratory in there, okay? All right, there we go. We're moving on to respiratory, okay? Let's, yeah, yeah look at there. I'm, I want you guys to blow me away. Blow me away on this section. Show me what you got, okay? I'm glad you're doing good too, Miss Joanna. We're gonna hit some more time scenarios. I'm gonna call the wonderful Miss Chimwee to the floor, and she's gonna read us out on this first one. All right, lady. Thank you. A31628, B31628, 31632, C31629, 31632, and D31628, 31632 times 4. A 20-year-old patient is seen for five transbronchial lung biopsies of two separate lobes. One biopsy is taken in one lobe and four biopsies in another lobe. What CPT code is are reported?
Oh man, I see y'all in there. I see y'all in there. Y'all are doing it. Yes. Not only do I think you can, I know you can. And y'all are just showing out. Y'all are just showing out. And if you just missed it, you're still showing out because you're real close. I'm, I'm going to give you that little nudge so you don't never miss one that's like this again. Because my goal with you coming to your Saturday study sessions is to teach the concept. So when you see it again, even if it's got on a different outfit, you know it when you see it, okay? <laughs> you know it when you see it. All right, so let's go ahead and just, you know, unpack this thing and, and, and jump right to it, okay? So I appreciate you guys. And I am going to unpack it. I am, give me one sec. You know I got to, not only do I run my mouth, I try my best to answer you guys as much as I can. And Ms. Chingui is right there with me too. And I appreciate you as well, lady. So here we go. All right. So we got this 20-year-old patient. They've had five transbronchial lung biopsies of two separate lobes. One biopsy was taken in one lobe and four biopsies in the other. The answer is B. Okay. And so many of you got there and some of you needed a nudge and then you got there because I could tell you guys were teetering between two answers. So we've got 31622. Okay. So this is this is the, the, the parent code and this code language, everything before this um, Semicolon is good stuff. Bronchoscopy, rigid or flexible, including fluoroscopic guidance when performed. For the 31628, eight, they're saying with transbronchial lung biopsy or biopsies, single lobe. Yeah, that that's pretty good. Yeah, two separate lobes. So so we would need a little bit more. Okay, but we're going to read these parenthetical guidelines. So it's letting us know that for code 31628, it should be reported only once, regardless of how many transbronchial biopsies were performed. All right, so we had five biopsies, but we can only report this, this code once for that single lobe. Now, we have two different lobes, so what do we do? Well, these parenthetical guidelines, it's going to tell us what to do. All righty, so we need to report the transbronchial lung biopsies performed on the additional lobe using what? Code 31632. It's telling us everything we need to know right here, right here with the parenthetical guidelines that fall beneath this first code, okay? So... This 31628 by itself, that's not enough because it did not code for the additional load. But here we've got the 31628. Yeah, let's kind of leave that right there with these two, okay? We need to check out the 31629. This is indeed one of the dependent codes is following up under here, but it's talking about a transbronchial needle aspiration, biopsy or biopsies, no mention of transbronchial needle aspiration. So we can go ahead and take that off, okay? Because this we're coding for that lung biopsy, not a needle aspiration biopsy of the trachea. All right, so it's down to these two. This is the only thing that's separating it, all right? Everything is the same with these two, but that, aha, uh -huh, immediately, what do I always tell you guys? If you've got a word and then you've got the S in parentheses, okay? Are we going to need that multiplier? All right, let's see. We've got with transbronchial lung biopsy or biopsies, each additional lobe, okay? Yeah. We need that additional lobe. And it told us that right there. So we've got a lot of checks and balances in there. Okay, there we go. Each additional lobe. Okay, so we've got one more lobe. So we only got the two. All right, so we're going to read these parenthetical guidelines. We know they're telling us here, yeah, you can use 31632 in conjunction with 31628. It told us that they're there also. So we know we are on the right track. And also right here, this 31632 should be reported only once, regardless of how many transbronchial lung biopsies are performed. All right. So you only report this thing one time. So we would not use this multiplier. All right. Indeed, that is the code. All right. So how you guys feeling? It is all about, see, it, it wasn't even that long, but it is all about 
really honing in and understanding these guidelines because it's going to push you to the correct answer. All right. It's all right. You still get credit for that thing, Miss Susan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no worries. And it's great when you like, ah, I knew that. Or man, this is what I was supposed to put. That's good. That's what I want to hear. Okay. You're not completely lost when that happens. It's just a matter of, all right, I gotta really, I gotta really slow down and understand that I can only report this code one time because you know, you don't want to get thrown because they're talking about all these biopsies, but we're focusing on the lobe, okay? Really honing in on that. That's what you want to, you know, like tune your eye to when you get to a scenario like this, paying attention to these codes, how they work together. We're coding for one lobe at a time. We got this add-on for the additional lobe, okay? Okay, but we can only report each of these codes once. All right. That's the takeaway with that thing. Yeah. You got to, because if you're like me, I get excited. I'm like, ah, I got it. I got it. I'm like, let me just take a breath. Let me step back. All right, guys, if you need to get a screenshot, go ahead and grab that thing. We're going to keep going because I want to push through to get as many of these things in as we can. I'm going to have Miss Chimwe come and read us out with the next scenario. Thank you so much, lady. You guys will have two and a half minutes after she's done reading. All right, A32098RT 7702 Chest X-ray done today demonstrates a large unresectable right upper lobe mass, and brain scan is suspicious for metastasis. Under fluoroscopic guidance in an outpatient facility, a percutaneous needle biopsy of a right lung lesion is performed for histopathology and tumor markers. A diagnosis of small cell carcinoma is made, and chemoradiotherapy is planned. What CPT and ICD-10 CM codes are reported?
All right, guys, that is our time. I'm going to keep pushing. You know, I want to give you guys more time on it. You, you, you know, I hate to, I hate to just, just, just disrupt you, but I gotta, I gotta, cause we gotta get through some more stuff. Okay. All right. So here we go. Let's take a look and unpack this code and see how we arrived at this answer. And many of you got there. And I see folks are sliding that answer in there. So I'm 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 trying to slow up a little bit because I don't want to do the reveal in case we got any more takers on this thing. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead now and spill the beans. Okay, so here we go. All right, so we've got a 55-year-old smoker, they've had cough, hemoptysis, slurred speech, weight loss. We've had a chest x-ray that was done. They're showing on that chest x-ray a large unresectable right upper lobe mass. A brain scan is suspicious for metastasis and fluoroscopic guidance in an outpatient facility with a percutaneous needle biopsy of the right lung lesion and histopathology and tumor markers was done and the patient was indeed diagnosed with small cell carcinoma and that's how we arrived at d all right so here we go how did we get here all right we're going to first start with taking a look at code 32098 this is for a thoracotomy okay so we know that wasn't done a thoracotomy with biopsies of the Plura, okay, so the thoracotomy, uh, okay, we're looking for a percutaneous needle biopsy, all right, so we're going to go ahead and just take that one away right now. We're going to continue on. Now we have a biopsy of the plura percutaneous needle, all right, I like that percutaneous needle, but we had the percutaneous needle of the right lung, not the pleura. There we go. Get 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 those glass wipes out, right? Get them out, okay? So we have all of these uh, parenthetical guidelines. We don't have to worry with them because the code is not, not correct. So don't spend time fussing with that, okay? Because already this is out of the game. Yeah, this and this is good, but it's of the pleura. We're talking about a percutaneous needle biopsy of the lung. Immediately, that one's gone as well. See, already boom and boom those things are done all right so now let's take a look at the code 32405 32405 we have biopsy lung or mediastinum percutaneous needle yeah percutaneous needle and it is yeah yeah you there we go yeah it lit up there we go percutaneous needle it is a biopsy of the lung yeah that's what we need let's give that a like yes before we sign off on it we need to take a look at code 326 32607 this is for a thoracoscopy all right yeah we don't need that all right so oh we take the 32607 we're gonna take that one away all right so no 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 we are coding for this biopsy. All right, so here, this is in all of them anyway, but we're doing our checks and balances here to show you how they, how they got there for the radiologic supervision interpretation. It gives us this string of codes and the code that we have, it does fall within that code series of, well, it's not a code series, but this code list of four, the 77002, we have that, all right? And we're just showing you just for due diligence where that came from. All right, here. And it's telling us right there, too. And already we see fluoroscopic guidance. Yeah, we lit that up. And this is just for completeness sake, for explaining the scenario. We're coding for that small cell carcinoma in the right upper lobe. And that's how we arrived at C34.11. All right. And it is of the right upper lobe. And here, I want you guys to, to understand that once you get here, don't start, don't start fooling with all this. We already know why this is so. It's in all of them anyway. So really, you don't even have to fool with it. It's in all of them. It's telling you what it is, but you don't have to do that. Once you have differentiated which one of these is indeed correct, answer and go. Okay, that makes sense. Answer and go. So you can so you can use your time wisely to be clear that you're where you need to be and where you should be. OK, and then you want to um, be aware with your with your med terms. OK, thoracoscopy, you're looking, you have the scope, you're taking a look around. 
uh, with the with 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 the thorax. OK, and if you look also in your book, you will see um, an actual actual picture. I'm trying to remember which pages on. Let's see. Let me get my. My 2020 because I co out of uh, let's see three. Three, two, I'm trying to tell you the page. Anybody know that page? Because I want you guys to be sure you're understanding. It's on page 205. It gives you the actual, um, the actual picture describing the thoracoscopy. So, so you might want to put yourself a little note there about uh, thoracoscopy as far as the definition as well as a thoracotomy. Okay to differentiate. Yeah, Miss Cheryl, yeah, 205. Y'all, y'all heard me over here flipping. I had to find it too, okay? All right, so we're going to keep on moving. But like I said, once you differentiate, if that lead code is not in any of the others, once you find the code that, that makes whatever, whichever choice true, and in this case, it's D. Don't keep going down this line. We've already eliminated all these. Answer that thing and keep going. Okay. All right. So we're going to keep on going. I'm going to call Miss Chimwe. Let's do it, lady. Let's read one more. Hi. Right. Okay. And the answers are A, 32850, 32856, times 2, B, five. 32851, C, 32850-32855-32855-2, 32850-50, and D, 32850-32856-32853. A 27-year-old girl has been on the lung transplant list for months, and today she will be receiving a left and right lung from an individual involved in an MVA. This person was dead on arrival at the hospital and is an organ donor. The donor pneumonectomy was performed by physician A, the back bench work by physician B, and the transplant of both lungs into the prepped and waiting patient by physician C. What is the correct coding for the removal? Physi physician A, preparation, physician B, and insertion physician C of the lungs.
All right, guys, how we doing? All right, we're going to go ahead and unpack this scenario. Many of you got there, I tell you. I am just so pleased you guys are doing outstanding. I'm seeing a one wonderful effort. I'm seeing a, a lot of good stuff, a lot, a lot of good stuff. And I'm answering folks and, and Ms. Dana, you, you are doing just outstanding. All of you guys are doing a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful job. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and unpack it. And Ms. Dana, you got it correct. My finger is, is, is trigger happy over here. I'm trying to answer everybody. For any of you that just missed it, we're going to unpack it for you and get you headed in the right direction, okay? So no worries there. I got you covered. I got you covered. All right, let's do this thing. So we've got this 27-year-old young lady. They've been on this lung transplant list for months, all right? And so today she's receiving a right and left lung transplant, okay? This person was DOA at the hospital, which is dead on arrival. And the pneumonectomy was performed by physician A. The back bench work was performed by physician B, okay? And the transplant of both lungs into the patient was prepared by physician C. So indeed, a lot going on. And it would indeed take a tremendous team, okay? So we have removal performed by physician A, prep by physician B, and insertion by physician C, and the answer is D, okay? So how do we get here? We're going to unpack it. All right, already we know. We have, with lung transplants, we have three possible procedures. We have the removal, the back bench work, the transplant, and we're only going to code those procedures that were performed, and in this case, all of them were. So when we take a look at A, B, C, and D, yeah, all of these are the same, all right? And it is for the removal. It's for the donor pneumonectomy or nectomies, okay? Including the cold preservation, it's from the cadaver donor. And we know it's a cadaver donor because this person was unfortunately dead on arrival. So for code 32850, we know yeah, that's what that is, okay? The donor pneumonectomy. So that's in all of them. Really, we could just get get to the order of getting on down here. Once we know that's what it is, we're going to keep on moving, all right? We need to code for this back bench work, all right? And this is the same code, family. It's either 32855 or 56, okay? So we know once we get this, we're down to 50-50. We've got this back bench work standard prep for the cadaver donor lung. What is differentiating the two? The number of lungs, all right? For 32855, it is for unilateral. This patient had a left and right lung transplant. That's what they're receiving. They're receiving both lungs. So already, and it's telling us right and left, and it's saying both, it's saying she's getting too long. So already we can get rid of the 32855. All right, we're done. Boom and boom. And no, we're not going to put a multiplier on that. The reason we're not going to put a multiplier on that because we have a code that takes care of it right there, bilateral. All right, so we need this 32856. Yeah, okay, so that's not enough. That's unilateral. We can't make it bilateral by putting a multiplier, making it times two. We have a code for that. Remember, you have to be mindful of those multipliers if the code language itself takes care of that. And in this case, it does. All right, so we've, we've gotten those off the board. We're going to get on down here to this last code, okay? So let's see what we got for the 32851. That's a lung transplant single. They they up to their old tricks again, y'all. They're trying to fake us out again with using this multiplier. We can't make this single lung transplant with this single lung code correct by adding a multiplier. You know why? Because there's something better. We've got this lung transplant double. And we need to, right and left, we got both lungs. So yeah, 32853, that is your code. All right, so if anybody needs to get a screenshot, you guys can go ahead and grab it, okay? You guys are doing outstanding. So if anybody just missed it, 
is this helpful? I hope that it gives you that aha moment so you can make those little notations like, uh uh, don't put that multiplier, don't get faked out by that. There is a code for if it's one lobe or if it's two. All right, that is good to hear, lady. Good to hear, Miss Susa. Hey, I'm glad to see others are saying, yeah, okay. That that's helpful. So I'm glad that 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 that's helpful, guys. So we're gonna squeeze one more in before we get out of here. All right. So I'm going to pause my screen. I, I, and and I know it's not advancing yet because I want to get to a certain scenario. I'm trying to cover as much ground as I can. And some some scenarios I feel might might cover a little more ground than others. So let me let me grab one really, really quick. That is a little bit. Yeah, that's the one I want to do. All right. So here we go. All right, guys. All right, Miss Chumwe, if you could come and read us out, I'd appreciate it, lady. All right. A three zero four one zero. B three zero four three five. C, 30450, and D, 30462. A patient's nose was hit with a baseball during a high school baseball game. At that time, reconstruction was performed with local grafts. Patient returns now as an adult, discontent with a bony prominence along the bony pyramid and flat look of the tip of the nose. He underwent major repair with osteotomies and nasal tip work. What CPT code is reported? All right, guys, let's unpack it. Many of you got there. Some of you are saying, hey, I got there. Uh, I, I know why I chose it, but I, I need to be sure why I chose it. And I, and I understand what you're talking about. I got you covered too. All right, so let's go ahead and, and see why we got what we got. 
Okay, so do I have any more takers? All right, I see a few more answers popping in there. And no worries, we got you. All right, we got you. As always, guys, I appreciate you guys always giving 125%, I'm gonna say 200%. We gonna double it. Y'all are doubling the effort today, all right? Let's go ahead and, and take a look, okay? So this patient was hit in the nose, okay? They're returning for a major repair, all right? With an osteotomy and they're having some nasal tip work, all right? So a rhinoplasty, primary rhinoplasty, that did not take place, okay? primary, all right, they are returning. So it's not primary anymore. They're returning now, okay? So obviously this patient had some reconstructive work done in a previous time, so now they're coming back. So anything that's falling up under this particular code family here, now we're looking at 30410, they're talking about a complete rhinoplasty, okay? Thank you for letting me know y'all not seeing my screen. <laughs> All right, so this patient is indeed returning. So we know that they've had some reconstructive work done sometime in the past, okay? So that's why they're returning. So anything falling under this code family of 30400, this primary, that would not, that wouldn't be, okay? So it doesn't matter with all of this wording because this, this primary, no, 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 they're returning, okay? So now we have this code rhinoplasty secondary, okay? So this is good, okay? Secondary, I like that, okay? Secondary because they're returning, all right? So if it's primary, this would have been when they first got hit in that nose, okay? When they were in high school, but now as an adult, they're like, hey, this nose still is not quite right. So they're coming back. They're gonna get a little more done. So that's why this is no longer primary. They're returning. So it's a secondary procedure. All right, it wasn't an intermediate revision. They're telling us it's major. So 30435 is off the table. We take a look here at 30450. It is indeed major revision. That's what it told us there. Repair, yeah, repair with osteotomies. Yeah, I see that too. And they're having some major tip work, some nasal tip work done. Yeah, let's give that a light. Yes, before we sign off, what else do we have here? Rhinoplasty for nasal deformity secondary to congenital cleft. Oh, okay, that right there, all of this common language here for this code group is wrong. So it doesn't matter about this tip and all this stuff because that's wrong. So we take that off the table. All right, that's how we got now, 30450. That is indeed your answer. How we feeling guys? I hope that cleared it up for you guys. Okay, yeah, the difference between that primary and that secondary. Yeah, make yourself a little note, okay? This is this is for the first go round and a secondary rhinoplasty would be they're having to come back because they're like that bone <laughs> is still not quite right, all right? So, hey, that that's all I've got for you because like I said, we've got to get here out of here on time today or else they will kick us out. And I don't want that to happen, okay? So as always, guys, please leave me your thoughts at the end of class. It doesn't have to be an essay. Let me know what I can do to continue to facilitate your learning, okay? Continue to help AMCI deliver quality classes to you. Continue to somehow help me to help you to get closer to that CPCA. I know you guys are going to do it. You're making the investment of the time and you're putting in the, the work and the effort. I appreciate you guys. Hey, your feedback is important. I do take a look at it so that I can kind of guide which way I need to go to give you the best experience possible because Saturday morning, that's prime real estate. That's prime time right there. And I hope that I have made good use of your time. I'm going to have Ms. Chimwe come and say, Good day and, and goodbye to you wonderful folks. Come on, Miss Chingwei. Hi, everyone. Good day. Thank you so much for spending your morning with us. It's been a wonderful time and I am glad you all had one or two things to learn. Just keep at it. Keep learning and you will all get there. Have a wonderful weekend.
so much for hanging out with me today, guys. Hey, I was giving everybody a shout out and I got to do it again. Thank you, ladies, for continuing to just give your best for spending these moments with us. OK, 120 minutes, that's a long time, but you guys give it 200 percent. I'm going to personally say thank you to Juanita, Cheryl, Keisha, Lisa, Sabrina, Sophia, Shandria, Soma, Susan. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you so much. All righty. And Juana. Thank you guys. All right, I hope we've made good use of your time. Thank you for making this investment towards your journey. You guys are gonna get there. I know you will. I appreciate you ladies. Enjoy your weekend, Ms. Chinway. It has been my pleasure. And ladies, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll see you next time.